Chapter 10, Sexual Dysfunctions, Paraphilic Disorders, and Gender Dysphoria. This is my summary of Barlow and Duran's uh, textbook on abnormal psychology. To begin with, sexual dysfunctions are when individuals find it difficult to have adequate sex and they may not be aroused or achieve orgasm. These can be organized into four categories depending on its onset and how frequently it occurs. So for example, there is lifelong, whereby it is a chronic condition that is present during a person's entire sexual life. There is acquired, whereby the disorder begins after sexual activity has occurred and um, that sexual activity was relatively normal until uh, this acquired disorder came about. Generalized is when a sexual disorder occurs every time when an individual attempts sex and a situational disorder occurs with some partners or at certain times. Okay, now I will be talking about specific types of sexual dysfunction. First of all, pelvic pain or penetration disorder are difficulties with penetration during intercourse due to painful contractions or spasms of the vagina. So this makes it very hard for women uh, to engage in intercourse. Furthermore, there is male hypoactive sexual desire disorders. This is characterized by little or no interest in sex and it causes significant distress. Hypo is not to be confused with hyper. Hypo being um, more likely, uh, being more frequent, while hypo is less frequent, like hyperactive and hypoactive. Anyway, moving along, female sexual interest or arousal disorder are deficits in interest or ability to become aroused in women. There's also erectile disorders, which include premature ejaculation. These erectile disorders are when the problem is not desire, as in it's not in having the desire to have sex, but it is through, it is a physical arousal problem, an inability to achieve and maintain an erection, which makes intercourse difficult or nearly impossible. This is usually, however, accompanies aging in men. Orgasm disorders. This is the inability to achieve an orgasm despite adequate sexual desire and arousal. It is common in women and less common in men. Delayed ejaculation, which is technically what I've mentioned before, is when males who have great difficulty in achieving orgasm have problems in controlling the timing of when to ejaculate, or they simply just don't ejaculate at all. Retrograde ejaculation. This occasionally occurs for all men that suffer this, that suffer this uh, disorder, whereby ejaculatory fluids travel back into the bladder. It is caused by drugs or coexisting medical conditions, but this should not be confused with delayed ejaculation. Premature ejaculation is when ejaculation occurs before the man and partner wish to and it is defined approximately one minute after penetration in the DSM-5. Female orgasmic disorder is when women are unable to reach orgasm. Genital pelvic pain uh, or penetration disorder. These are difficulties with penetration during attempted intercourse, whereby there's significant pain during intercourse. Vaginimus. That is whereby a pelvic muscle in the outer third layer of the vagina, in the outer third to the vagina, undergo involuntary spasms when intercourse is attempted. Beck in 1993 stated that women report sensations of ripping, burning, or tearing during intercourse. This is very painful and of course would discourage women with this disorder to have sex. Assessing sexual behavior. Sexual behavior is assessed through interviews, medical evaluations, and psychological assessment. For men, psychologists can use penile strain gauge recording devices that measure penis erection via polygraphs, and this helps to measure arousal. For women, there is a vaginal photoplephysmography, which is inserted into the vagina with a photoreceptor on the side of the instrument, and this measures the amount of light reflected from the vaginal wall. Since blood flow increases during arousal, the amount of light is diminished, and thus this can measure um, like indirectly the amount of arousal a woman has during intercourse, let's say. 
possible causes of sexual dysfunction, chronic illness, chronic alcoholism, anti-hypersensitive medications like high blood pressure medication, as well as anxiety, prolonged usage of pornography, and cultural views can influence um, and possibly bring about sexual disorders and dysfunctions. Treatments um, were pioneered by the likes of Masters and Johnson uh, in human sexual inadequacy in 1970. For example, there is sensate focus, whereby couples are instructed to refrain from intercourse or genital caressing and to explore or enjoy each other's body via kissing, hugging, and massaging. So in a way, encouraging like more of the romantic uh, connection, romantic interaction with one another, with each other. Non-demanding pleasure. This is when a couple moves to genital pleasure, uh, like foreplay, but orgasms and intercourse are banned. Eventually, however, orgasm and intercourse are reintroduced, but the time and depth of penetration um, is gradually built up. And this occurs over the period of two weeks. Siemens in 1956 developed a squeeze technique whereby the penis is stimulated to nearly full erection after the partner squeezes um, the area where the head meets the shaft. This reduces arousal and thus allows for in- for intercourse to become prolonged and um, to commence. And if arousal is too quick for the individual, for the man, then this technique is repeated. Viagra was um, developed in, what, 1998, also known as Sildenafil, and this was introduced to treat erectile dysfunction by helping to maintain an erection for longer. Perpiverin slash prostaglandin is when this certain chemical is injected into the penis when the individual is having sex, causing the blood vessels to dilate and allowing blood to flow to the penis in 15 minutes. And this this can last for one to four hours. So this is just another way to maintain an erection. Penile prosthesis is the implanting of semi-rigid silicon rods that can be bent by males into the correct position for intercourse or maneuvering around it or in it or out of it. In addition, I will now be talking about paraphilic disorders as opposed to the other uh, previous sexual dysfunctions. The sexual dysfunctions are more physiological, while these paraphilic disorders are more to do with abnormalities in arousal desire. Um, or attraction. These are more psychologically based. So to begin with, paraphilic disorders are sexual arousal in individuals that occur inappropriately, whereby they they desire objects or other individuals in a sexual manner. For example, froturistic disorder are when in a crowded situation, a male is rubbing unto the point of ejaculation on another individual. The victim cannot escape easily because of said crowded situation. There are also other um, paraphilia in the form of fetishist disorders, whereby an individual is sexually attracted to non-living objects or sources of tactile stimulation like rubber, black plastic, etc., Most of the individual's sexual urges and fantasies focus on these objects. Partialism is the attraction to certain parts of the body, for example, uh, foot, buttocks, hair, etc, etc. These can produce or lead to other disorders like voyeuristic disorder, which is the practice of observing and becoming aroused to an unsuspecting individual who is undressed or naked. The risk involved in uh, peering, let's say, into what other people are doing in their bedrooms increases anxiety which increases further arousal because it gets the heart pumping, sweating, so on so forth. On a similar note, exhibitionistic disorder is when individuals achieve sexual arousal and gratification by exposing their genitals to unsuspecting strangers. Maybe they gain pleasure, arousal, or excitement from that same risk that produces anxiety. Transvestic disorder is when individuals are sexually aroused, strongly associated 
associated with fantasizing of dressing in clothes of the opposite sex. Other paraphilias include sexual sadism, which is the inflicting of painful humiliation during sexual arousal. There is sexual masochism, which is the inflicting of sufferings like pain or humiliation during sexual arousal. So you can see like um, there's a link whereby one inflicts the pain and one desires for some strange reason to endure the pain. And that is believed to, as stated before, increase risk, anxiety and subsequent arousal. Pedophilia is the final paraphilia whereby it is the sexual attraction to children or young adolescents age 13 or younger. Usually it has, well, it definitely has legal ramifications whereby individuals with who are pedophiles are charged with child pornography offenses and this is a diagnostic indicator of um, the disorder of pedophilia. Treatment. Covert sensitization, according to Catella, in 1968, carries out uh, in the imagination of patients, whereby the patient associates a sexually arousing image in their imagination with reasons as to why the behavior is dangerous or harmful. After six to eight sessions, the therapist narrates dramatic scenes and patients imagine them until arousal disappears. In the way, covert sensitization is the introduction of like a dialectic approach whereby individual on one hand gains pleasure from these paraphilias and on the other hand where there be their moral conscience or so on so forth reasons as to why this is not okay this is bad or harmful or dangerous to the individual card sort scores is another treatment method whereby it measures how much an individual wishes for sexual versus non-sexual interaction with a certain said person, with a certain individual that they are uh, attracted to. Orgasmic recognition is another technique whereby patients are instructed to masturbate to their usual fantasies, but they gradually substitute more desirable um, fantasies just before ejaculation. Relapse prevention. This is when patients are taught to recognize early signs of temptation and use self-control procedures before the urge becomes too strong. So um, to to prevent relapse from occurring, basically. If these psychological slash behavioral methods do not work, there is always the chemical option, chemical castration, whether through cyproterone acetate, which is an anti-androgen that eliminates sexual desire and fantasy by reducing testosterone levels drastically. These desires return, however, when individuals stop taking the drug. Other drugs include medrosiprogesterone, whereby it is an hormonal agent that reduces testosterone. Triptorolin is another chemical uh, castration drug that inhibits gonadotropin secretion in men. And this is more effective and has fewer side effects. Finally, I will be talking about gender dysphoria, transgenderism, and, um, and its subsequent treatment. Gender dysphoria is incongruence and psychological distress or dissatisfaction with their gender uh, assignment. A cause of this may be due to sex hormonal imbalance in the brain. However, more research is needed. Gender non-conformity are when individuals, behaviors, and attitudes reflect those of the opposite gender. However, not much is actually known in whether this is related to dysphoria or not. Treatment of gender dysphoria uh, includes sex reassignment surgery, which is a non-reversible procedure, and it requires requires a number of steps that surgeons use to physically alter the anatomy as well as the adding of hormones. So um, if in children, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual number 5 states that there are three options to decrease cross-gender behaviors and identification um, by averting the negative consequences of social rejection, where whereby surgery is avoided. The second option is 
to wait for the watch, see how gender unfolds naturally, and it requires a strong support base. Basically, this is um, observing what happens and doing nothing about it. Well, other than giving support for the uh, feelings of this warrior. The third option is where cross-gender identity is actively affirmed and encouraged, but critics argue this approach may increase the likelihood of persistence. Other methods include gynecomastia, whereby hormones are used to promote the growth of breasts and other secondary sex characteristics. Um, this, however, is a debated topic, as in gender dysphoria, it is not settled. It is controversial, as always. Like other disorders, it requires additional scientific psychological research. Intersexuality and disorders of sex development are when individuals have physical characteristics that are similar to that of both sexes, such as, for example, individuals who have male parts are called merms, and those with female parts are firms, and those who are hermaphrodites um, have both testes and ovaries, according to Fasto Sterling 2000. But yeah, this disorder of uh, intersex is, well, it's a rare, um, it could either be from genetic dysfunction or abnormality in development, in prenatal development in the womb. And and um, ultimately, that's about it. I covered sexual dysfunctions, and these dysfunctions could be disorders in desire, arousal, or in the orgasm phase. I talked about how these disorders are either lifelong, acquired, generalized, or situational. They can involve issues in erection, orgasm, ejaculation, um, pain from the act of intercourse, pain in the vagina, um, and ways to assess these disorders, like um, sexual, like vaginal photoplethymography and strain gauge and penile strain gauge. I also looked at, we also looked at treatments for these physiological disorders, like a sensate focus, non-demanding pleasure, squeeze technique, or Viagra. Um, in addition, we looked at disorders like fetishes, partialism, sadism, masochism, boy risk disorders, exhibition, hysteria disorders, and their subsequent treatments, whether it be from chemical castration or covert sensitization, card source sores, orgasmic recognition, relapse prevention, high proterone acetate, um, yeah, chemical castration. And finally, we look at gender dysphoria, non-conformity, sex reassignment surgery, gynecomastia, and intersexuality, and intersex people, and intersex uh, disorders. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching.